What's up guys, straight from the chest. My name is Justin Groth, guys. I wanna welcome you to another installment of my personal development podcast. Guys, I'm so thankful that you're with me. I'm so thankful that you're giving me your time, your listening ear. For those of you who are new, welcome to the channel. I hope that you take something from my word and I hope that you can apply it and it can actually radiate through your life and bring some type of uh, inordinate, uh, inordinate meaning and, and pursuit because really that's my goal with this. <sighs> Guys, I'm going to be honest. I'm not confident. I'm really not that confident. I don't know what I'm doing. I'm not confident and I don't know what I'm doing. Maybe you can relate. Some of you who know me in person or maybe go to my local, the local gym that I'm a part of, maybe you think different. Maybe you're in my shoes too. Maybe that, maybe you have peers that look at you and think that you are confident. You got it all together. Meanwhile, inside, you have such a lack of confidence. And I don't mean like a low self-esteem. I mean, your confidence is not where it should be with regards to what you do in real life and, and actually how, how well you're viewed at what you do. But just because you're good at what you do and people extend accolades to you doesn't mean that you're confident as a byproduct. You know, you may, you may be a woodworker, you may be, you may be a blogger, you may be a songwriter and with every song or blog that you write, with every cabinet that you build, You don't want people to see it. You don't want people to read it. You don't want people to hear it, but you're still putting it out there. You're still putting the content out there. You're still putting the action in place, but it's not like you're a promoter. And too often, I think that, you know, I, I'm just not the promoter that I probably could be. And maybe you're the same in the same boat. And the reason for that is, Look, man, I'm just trying to do what I know best. And it doesn't mean that I think I'm great at it. It means that I'm continuously in the pursuit of it because it's really the only thing that derives meaning in my life. It's really the only thing that gives me a feedback to war, to reg with regards to um, a, a reward or a, an understanding rather, not a reward, an understanding that yeah, maybe I'm in this position for a reason. Maybe, maybe I'm supposed to be here. Maybe this is, this is, I'm in alignment here, but it doesn't mean that it's, that it's producing or manufacturing confidence as a byproduct. And I think that that's a good thing. I think to some degree, that's a good thing because it keeps me humble and it also keeps me hungry in my pursuit. And I don't mean hungry like hustle. I mean, hungry in regards to wanting more of that feeling. So I keep putting, putting the time and I keep pressing, but it doesn't mean that every single day that goes by, I'm, I'm developing more and more confidence. And I think confidence is a very, a, a very touchy line. I think that you're either overly confident and you're arrogant and you're cocky or you're just kind of confident, but it kind of can be displayed as, as also a, a lack of confidence. I don't know. It's hard to explain. I feel like there's one, it, it's, I feel like it's a very thin line that people ride. I don't feel like many people can be an even keel confidence. I don't think that exists really. I think you're one or the other. And I feel like, and maybe I didn't explain that that well, because it sounds better in my head than it does coming out of my mouth. But I don't, I'm not going to spend too much time on it, but I just really think that some people are overly confident or they're just kind of not that confident, even though they say they're confident. I think that my confidence comes from a pursuit 
in the thing that I feel good at, but it doesn't necessarily rear its head with me with regards to confidence, being confident, being confident and having an actual auger in confidence. But it's only the more reason why I keep pressing because I'm searching for the confidence. I'm searching for the meaning. I'm searching to feel that zeal in everyday life that comes so effortlessly, but I'm also giving something so much attention and effort and cognitive ability that it just, that it, I'm just, that I'm producing, I'm functioning, but I'm, I'm not, I'm not really trying at the same time. And that kind of brings confidence along with it, but it more so brings meaning and it brings a value system to the table that I can't produce on my own. And where do you think I derive that? Where do you think you derive that? Who do you think gives that to you? If you've been listening for any length of time, you know that I'm Christian. Saying that I'm Christian doesn't mean that I'm perfect because I'm not. But it says that I'm in a constant pursuit of a developmental character and changing and restructuring and reconforming and shedding old skins. And so I'm constantly in that effort, in that pursuit, but I'm never fully confident. But I don't mean that from a, a nihilistic standpoint, or I don't mean that from a, from, you know, I need empathy here. I need you to feel for me. I'm saying that wholeheartedly, despite what people may think of me or think of you, just because you're good at something doesn't mean you're confident. But to be able to vocalize that and be authentic, that's something that doesn't come easy. And it doesn't come easy for me to say, but it's a part of who I am. And remember, I'm my best when I'm me and you're your best when you're you. You're not your best when you're becoming somebody else. And that's another end of this of the spectrum that I want to touch on. Sometimes I can watch people. I can listen to people. Sometimes you can listen or watch people that are in your same craft and you can admire them so much that all you do is consume them and you start to water down or dilute what you are and who you are and what you've been given. And you start to formulate yourself based on the predication of them. When the reality is they have nothing to do with it. Sometimes you need to abdicate yourself or abdicate people rather from who you are and what you're equipped with because it's unique what you got, bro. It's different what you got, but you're not giving that enough credit and you're not tapping into it because you're, be you can't be, you can't, you can't be hundred percent you, but also allowing this entity over here to take residence as well. It doesn't work that way. Just like faith and fear don't coexist. You can't be yourself while having splices of somebody else in your life. Even if it's an admirable person, I don't care. Even if it's a Dalai Lama, I don't care. You have, you have to listen to what's absolute, what's implicit in your being. It doesn't mean you're always going to be right. It doesn't mean that people are always going to favor you. It doesn't mean that you're not going to go through betrayal and vengeance and despair in the process because that those are all prerequisites to this man. But what it means is when you're done evolving, you can look back in your life and say job well done, or God can look at you and say job well done. Because you actually, you actually went out in a sort of courageous position. You took a courageous position against all odds and all odds are what is circumventing in you every single day to go to not do because it's fearful because where you're going is uncharted. But for some reason, there's a gravitational pull in that direction and you can't help but go there but maybe you're only stepping a foot in 
Because again, fear is crippling you. But this is all intertwined. It's all tethered here. I may not be confident. You may not be confident in your craft, but it doesn't mean it ends the pursuit. Because that pursuit is implicit in your being with regards to what it's giving you, what kind of, what kind of emotions it's, it's, it's attaching itself into you with. Like that, that's unexplainable and that you can't understand. The only way you get that is when you go into your character, when you actually develop your character and you go all into what God has equipped you with and you don't become diluted or watered down from what anybody else has or what they've done or just you become a mirror of that person. That's not okay. So sometimes you need to shut people out. You need to shut everything out and you need to just be in silence with what God placed in you and just go into that. That may be a myriad of things. Whatever it is, if it's your blog, if it's your songwriting, if it's your, if it's your, if it's the new business you want to build, if it's that barber shop you want to open, if it's a certain name you want to call it that isn't of the norm, who cares? You can see the vision. Nobody else can. It's not for everybody else. It was for you. You know how many people told me Fitness Extraordinaire was not a good name? But some reason it just stuck with me and I couldn't get rid of it. And there have been multiple times in my life that I've gone with what I with my, what my gut said, which is AKA, I believe, God's voice speaking to me in my conscience or in my uh, subconscious. But that's something that I've never, I've never ventured away from. And it's hard to not listen to people because they may know something that you don't know, but here's what they don't know. They don't know what you know, and they don't know what you've been told. And that's the goal right there. That's the goal. And you're going to miss out on a whole lot. You're going to miss out on a whole lot of opportunity on a whole lot of rewards, on a whole lot of value giving to people through your talents if you don't actually listen to just yourself. I'm not saying, I'm not saying be arrogant and don't take anybody else in and don't be open-minded, but you know the discerning difference in the voice guiding you and the voices barking at you. You know the difference. And I'm telling you that your pursuit, your meaning is found in that voice. Listen to it. Done.